hello everyone and welcome to my youtube channel my name is dr tolu and in this video i'm going to be talking to you about five things that you should know about bacterial vaginosis now if you like what i have to say please hit the subscribe button hit the like button and if you have a topic you would like me to discuss sometime in the future you can just leave it as a comment for me and i'll do my best to get to it so guys without much ado let's get straight to it So the first thing that everyone should know about bacterial vaginosis is, well, what is bacterial vaginosis? Right now, bacterial vaginosis is a common vaginal infection. It is so common that it is the most common vaginal infection in women between the ages of 15 and 44 years. In fact, statistics show that at least 35% of women will have bacterial vaginosis in their lifetime. Now, bacterial vaginosis occurs when there is an overgrowth of the bacteria in the vagina. Now, when you think about it, the vagina has what we call microbiome. That means it has normal bacteria in it. And you can think of it this way. You can think of it in terms of good bacteria and bad bacteria. Both are present in the vagina. So bacterial vaginosis occurs when the bad bacteria overgrow and become stronger than the good bacteria. Right? So that means it is normal for the vagina to have microorganisms like bacteria. But when the bad bacteria overpower the good bacteria, that's when we have what we call bacterial vaginosis. The second thing that everyone should know about bacterial vaginosis is what causes it. Now, strictly speaking, we do not know what causes bacterial vaginosis, right? But then when we think about it, anything that can upset the normal vaginal bacterial balance can increase the risk of bacterial vaginosis some of them are lifestyle habits some of them are maybe things that happen to us in the course of our lives but there are several things that can upset the normal bacterial balance in the vagina so sometimes it can be something as natural as pregnancy right pregnancy we've come to realize that just pregnancy itself can increase the risk of bacterial vaginosis because of its effect on the bacterial balance of the vagina. Now, some other things that may happen in the course of one's life, for instance, um, maybe having a new sex partner or engaging in or protected sex, especially with say a new sex partner, can also increase the risk of um, bacterial vaginosis. This is because you know, a new partner comes with new stuff and then during unprotected sex, um, there is the process of ejaculation right into the vagina and that's because it's a new person and your body is not used to the person there may be something about that person that can upset your normal bacterial balance in the vagina and that can increase your risk of bacterial vaginosis now for those who have multiple sexual partners they are also at increased risk of um, bacterial vaginosis so we've looked at some of these things some other things that may increase the risk of having bacterial vaginosis are to those who are on antibiotics maybe you are being on antibiotics for a long time or maybe you use antibiotics often because what antibiotics do is that they have antibacterial properties being on it often can kill the bacteria in the vagina now look at it this way if it kills maybe more of the good bacteria in the vagina then that can give the bad bacteria more power and then cause an overgrowth of the bacteria so women who maybe wash the yeah. vagina now you have some women who believe that the vagina needs to be washed now when i talk about vagina i'm talking about the inner muscular tube right that leads to the cervix i'm not talking about the vulva the vulva is the outer part the outer structure that you can see where you have the labia majora minora where you have the clitoris all that part that you can see that is the vulva the vagina is the inner muscular tube where during vaginal sex the penis enters right that is the vagina so those who are engaged in washing the vagina like those who maybe put water up there or use products right may find that use some of those products or even just the water can upset the normal bacterial balance of the vagina and that can increase the risk of having bacterial vaginosis The third thing that everyone should know about bacterial vaginosis is that it is not a sexually transmitted disease. Right now, strictly speaking, bacterial vaginosis is not a sexually transmitted disease or infection. Right? But that said, like I had mentioned earlier, the act of sex can increase the risk of having bacterial vaginosis, especially say when you have sex with a new partner 
or maybe if you have multiple sexual partners or if you're engaging on protected sex with these people right maybe multiple sexual partners or with your new sexual partner unprotected sex can increase the risk of bacterial vaginosis but that said it is not something that is transmitted sexually it's just that the act of sex can increase the risk of having bacterial vaginosis so bacterial vaginosis is not an std it's not an sti now the fourth thing that everyone should know about bacterial vaginosis are the symptoms of bacterial vaginosis now i must point out right now that more than 80 percent of women who have bacterial vaginosis will not have any symptoms that means if you look at 10 women with bacterial vaginosis eight or more than eight of them will not have any symptoms whatsoever right but then when they do have symptoms the symptoms are really hard to miss for instance the most prominent symptom um, which if a woman comes to maybe their healthcare provider or their doctor one of the most common symptoms they complain of is a fishy smell right a fishy smell down there especially say after having sex they then find that maybe the room is um, pervaded with the smell of fish right and then it makes them uncomfortable it makes their partners uncomfortable it's not a situation that many women like to be in so that's there also the nature of the discharge that woman sees changes right it changes from what they normally see their normal vaginal discharge and it could become say off-white in color or grayish in color in some women it's even it has a greenish hue to it so it looks greenish right other symptoms that they may notice is that they may have a burning sensation when they pee around their vagina or vulva vaginal area some of them have itching may have um, irritation skin irritation down there and all these symptoms are actually pretty uncomfortable for many women to have And that brings us to number five on the list which is how is bacterial vaginosis treated now we must know that some cases of bacterial vaginosis go without treatment but then it is important for women who suspect that they have bacterial vaginosis or they notice changes in maybe their vaginal discharge or the smell of their um, vagina to go to see their healthcare provider this is because bacterial vaginosis needs to be treated right and it needs to be treated as soon as it can be the reason why is because bacterial vaginosis if left untreated can increase the risk of women having sexually transmitted diseases like chlamydia and in pregnant women who have bacterial vaginosis it can increase the risk of um, having preterm babies right so it is important to treat bacterial vaginosis now the treatment for bacterial vaginosis is usually simple right we usually use antibiotics but before that when you go to see your healthcare provider what your doctor will want to do is to ask you questions special questions maybe around your gynecological history your sexual history your doctor may also do a pelvic exam maybe with like a speculum to look in there and to see observe the nature of the discharge the smell from there you know it's really important the clinical aspects the things that we see are really important in diagnosing bacterial vaginosis and your doctor may also want to take a swab right like to get a sample of your vaginal discharge and then send it to the lab right now if your doctor has diagnosed with bacterial vaginosis the treatment like i said earlier is usually with antibiotics now the antibiotics that are commonly used for treatment of bacterial vaginosis are metronidazole and clindamycin metronidazole is what is commonly known as flagyl and they have clindamycin with the treatment of bacterial vaginosis it is really important for you to complete your antibiotic therapy right because what may happen is when you use your antibiotics up to a certain point you may notice that your symptoms disappear or they may look like they are no longer there but it is still important for you to complete your antibiotics use them until they are finished <laughs> because if you don't then what may happen is that the bacterial vaginosis may come back and it may come back stronger so it's really important when treating it to complete your antibiotic therapy another thing worthy of note is that with bacterial vaginosis it's also important to make lifestyle changes if need be if your vagina is a self-cleaning organ it does not need you to wash it it cleans itself so you find many women who they just stop washing their vagina and suddenly bacterial vaginosis that they've been having repeatedly stops right so it's important because sometimes even after treating it if you still engage in some of these things 
that I've mentioned, they can increase your risk of having it again. Then you have it again, you treat it, then you don't want that to keep happening. Because if it keeps happening that way, you may now start having other things that come up, like maybe um, bacterial vaginosis that becomes more and more difficult to treat. Making some of these lifestyle changes can make a whole lot of difference in the treatment of bacterial vaginosis. <music> all right guys thank you for watching this video if you liked what i had to say please hit the subscribe button hit the like button and leave a comment for me telling me how useful you found this video so until we meet again next time bye